All right, let's see what is on the old to-do list for today. Oh yeah, we need to do some refactoring. Refactor that runner. This goes to its own file, so we'll give it the DAC. Jump into a split, make a new module, abstract runner.py, paste it, save it. Imports are fixed, save it, imports fixed. Commit it, ship it, and we're out. I hope you enjoyed that refactoring just as much as I did. Because it was enabled by FlybyPy. Today we're talking about auto imports in NeoVim and in IPython. And it's pretty freaking good. I've had auto imports working before, but they are only, they're, they're flaky. They work sometimes, other times they don't work. They grab some packages, not all of them, can't configure it. FlybyPy has been working flawlessly for me so far. Let's go in and take a look at it. To install it, it's just a pip install FlybyPy. And before you get too crazy with your configuration, make sure you stow it. CD into those dot files, make their IPython, touch IPython slash dot flybypy and then stow that ipython then you can edit your home slash pi flyby you can see mine i grabbed a whole bunch of modules that i import on a regular basis and i dumped them in here it's like uh 260 lines long let's jump on down into an ipython session and we need to get some data we're going to say df equals pd dot read csv cars dot csv Notice I didn't even import pandas and we already got a data frame here. Scrolling up, you can see PyFlyBy kicked in and imported pandas for us out of the box. We didn't even have to import it, but it goes a step further. Say we got something like request. I don't even know how to use request, so I'm gonna give it the question mark. Imports it for us and gives us the old help document there. Another one, I really like this one create, you know, something like uh, create uh, engine from SQL Alchemy. I don't have a database to connect to though, so let's just pretend something here. We made our, we made our own create engine and we're gonna create engine and it takes things like, I don't know, MySQL colon Peter at, and then you need like a password somewhere in this complicated connection string that I am getting all completely wrong here. But then you remember, I didn't even import get pass yet. And maybe you're like 80 characters into this connection string and you're like, oh, I don't want to redo that. So you just do it anyways. Get pass dot get pass. So we don't want to, we don't want to write our passwords here. We want to do this right. We don't want that password in our history. We don't want it in our code at all. Out of the box. We're just going to get pass and it import get pass and it's asking for my password my password is super secret you can't see it and i got my engine without even importing get pass real quick just to note um i only really talk about ipython here but i'm pretty sure it works exactly the same in jupiter i just don't use jupiter it's all the same under the hood it all uses ipython just a little bit different workflow this is what works for me if jupiter works for you then go ahead and use jupiter I ain't here to judge. Okay, let's talk about that IPython setup. What they suggest in the docs is you do a percent load ext and give it the pi flyby. Notice here, I've already got it reloaded. That's fine. I could re I could reload. I could give it the reload. It's the way I've done it. I've gone into my home slash dot ipython slash profile default slash startup stat startup slash uh, flyby pi because I named it wrong, of course. And I've made this module from ipython import get ipython import subprocess get ipython. We try to run this magic loadext pi flyby. And if we find a module not found there, don't worry. We're going to install it. I don't want to ever worry about installing Pi Flyby in any of my virtual environments. I want it to just show up. I even went as far as installing Iceheart here. It'll come in handy later when we're in the event. So now once we got Pi Flyby running on default, we can also do things like autocomplete. So say I want to uh, popen.tab. Didn't even import it. 
and it's already got the auto complete for me. I can popen.wait, it's already there. You can see right here from subprocess import popen. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta talk about our NVIM setup. Did a little video last week on the whole auto groups. Make sure you check that one out. Anyways, I've got a command called pi pre save and a pi post save. This one needs to come in on a post save because we are gonna run the command tidy imports on our file. The content from our file needs to already be in that file before we run the command. So that's what we do here. We make a Vim script function, pi post save, and we're gonna execute silent, tidy imports, black, quiet, replace start imports, action replace on this buffer. And then make sure you give it the colon E, execute E, so that you get the update. And then down in our auto group, we are gonna give it an auto command. Buff right post, start up pi, execute pi post save. And that's gonna make sure it runs on every save from NeoVim. So now you may be wondering, where the heck do I install this thing for Vim? Well, Vim just needs access to that shell command. So you can put it right in the virtual environment in the place that Vim is gonna be running, or you could pip x install Vim if you wish. I've already got it in my virtual environment most of the time because I've, I'm running IPython, so that's where I'm gonna put it. Let's open up a new.py and take a look at how this works in IPython. So the first thing we can do, maybe we'll just start like throwing some stuff in here. Counter, got it. Uh, P open, got it. What else do we got? We got requests, requests. Okay, those are all pretty simple imports. We can also import things that we alias in, out in that uh, config. Import pandas as pd. Again, that config home pi flyby, you simply just put your imports in there and it figures it out. Uh, do note, if you have duplicated things in your pi flyby config, it's not gonna work. It's just simply not gonna do anything from my experience. So you can see we've got all the styles of imports. We've got the from module import. We've got the import something as an alias, and we've got the standard old import. Something to note about the order of where Pi Flyby puts its imports. If we move request down here and we ask for something like a simple namespace, it's going to put the import right here. In my post save, I also run isort, so it fixes this. Something else to note in API or like Dundernet files to have just import things so they come up. You're supposed to put this Dunder all in there. It makes Flygate happy. It probably does some other magic. If you don't have this, Pi Flyby will delete them. If you just put the Dunder all, it'll do the imports for you. But if we import requests, because we want that in our API, of course, who doesn't want that in their API? Save that, gone, it's out of here because Pi Flyby figures out we don't need it and gets it out of here for us. It's pretty handy, but be careful in those uh, Dunder Nits and API uh, building files. We did some refactoring at the very beginning here. Let's walk through that. So I just opened up the uh, Kedro project and I found a class that had some imports that were only used within the class itself. So I could oh, grab that class, paste it here, hit save. Notice this class needs logging, but if we come back over here, logging isn't needed. So when we save, logging disappears. Last up, this thing has a CLI command. I haven't really found a need for it yet, but it's there. And now that I know it's there, I'll probably find something for it eventually it's called pi and we can execute Python commands after this and it'll automatically import things and run it. So I can, you know, load in my cars.csv in ZSH by giving it this pi pd.readcsv. I can do the pi help pd, yeah. That one works. I don't know what's going on with the pd.dataframe. And that is how I have made my Python editing experience silky smooth this month, adding those 
little bits of automated imports have made things so freaking nice. Tell, let me tell you how excited I get every time I'm typing something out. I need a new module and I just put it there and it shows up at the top of my file. Makes me feel pretty good. Suck around this long, make sure you pop down below, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down there. Have you installed PyFlyby yet? I bet by the end of this video. If you've watched this long and haven't hit pip install PyFlyby, what are you doing with your life?